Fiorana and welcome to the complete travel guide to the Cook Islands by cookislandspocketguide.com. Just specks on the world map, the Cook Islands are tiny pieces of paradise scattered across a vast portion of the South Pacific Ocean. Those who manage to find the islands of Rarotonga, Aitutaki, or even the far-flung atolls like Puka Puka are instantly enamoured with their Polynesian charm, soothing climate, and some of the world's most stunning lagoons. That's the Cook Islands in a nutshell. But if you want to be one of the lucky ones zipping around Raro on a scooter or snorkeling with turtles and giant clams in Aitutaki, let's take a deep dive with us, Cook Islands Pocket Guide through the best travel guide to the Cook Islands. Let's start with a short intro to the Cook Islands. The Cook Islands is an archipelago in the South Pacific Ocean between Tonga, Samoa, Kiribati and French Polynesia. It is approximately 3,000 kilometers or 1,864 miles northeast of New Zealand. The Cook Islands land area is 261 square kilometers or 101 square miles scattered across 2,200,000 square kilometers of ocean. The maximum average temperature is around 27 degrees Celsius and that's 81 degrees Fahrenheit. And the minimum average temperature is around 21 degrees Celsius and that's around 70 degrees Fahrenheit. The yearly average rainfall is around 2,000 millimeters, which is around 79 inches. The local time zone is UTC or GMT minus 10 and the population is approximately 17,900. The official languages of the Cook Islands are Cook Islands Maori and English. So, what is the best way to get to the Cook Islands? The Cook Islands can be accessed by flight, cruise ship or private sailing yachts. The most popular way to get to the Cook Islands is by international flight, so let's start with that. First up, flying to the Cook Islands. Direct international flights to the Cook Islands come from New Zealand, Australia and French Polynesia. If you're coming from further afield, connecting flights can be made in New Zealand and Australia. All international arrivals land at Rarotonga International Airport on the island of Rarotonga. For more information about getting to the Cook Islands, check out our Getting to the Cook Islands guide on cookislandspocketguide.com. When it comes to cruises, the Cook Islands is on the itinerary of several South Pacific cruises from French Polynesia, New Zealand and Australia as well as round-the-world cruises from the US and Europe. There are two main ports of call in the Cooks, one in Rarotonga and the other in Aitutaki. Cruises also occasionally stop at Palmerston. For those of you sailing to the Cook Islands, the Cook Islands is situated on the Trans-Pacific journey between the US and New Zealand. The yachting season is between May and October. A note about custom declarations. The Cook Islands has a strict biosecurity measures at the border to stop unwanted pests and diseases from entering the country. Therefore, anyone arriving in the Cook Islands has to declare any risk items they have packed in their luggage, even common items like food and sports gear. Be sure to read up on arriving in Rarotonga, our airports, customs, biosecurity and arrivals process so you are prepared and check out our complete guide on how to get to the Cook Islands for even more tips on making your way to the islands. Oh, and by the way, all the links I'm mentioning you can find in the description below. Now, let's talk about the best time to visit the Cook Islands. The Cook Islands is a tropical country and experiences warm temperatures throughout the year. It has two distinct seasons, a dry season, which is drier and cooler, and a wet season, which is hotter and humid. The dry season is between April to November. 
It's also known as the winter season in the Cook Islands, although many would not describe it as winter with temperatures around 19 to 28 degrees Celsius. That's 66 to 82 degrees Fahrenheit. The rainfall per month is an average of 102 to 174 millimeters. That's four to 6.9 inches. The dry season is also the time to see whales, do kite surfing or kiteboarding, to have clearer scuba diving conditions and for catching wahoo. The wet season is between December to March and it is hotter and more humid with temperatures around 21 to 29 degrees Celsius. That's 70 to 84 degrees Fahrenheit and an average monthly rainfall of 174 to 237 millimetres. That's between 6.9 to 9.3 inches. This is also the Cook Islands cyclone season, which means there's a risk of cyclones, but only a risk, which you can learn more about in our cyclone safety guide on cookislandspocketguide.com. The wet season is also the best time for catching marlin, yellowfin tuna, and Mahi Mahi, also for so experiencing some popular events and avoiding other tourists. We do have a full guide on the seasons and climates of the Cook Islands on cookislandspocketguide.com. Moving on to what to pack. The main thing you need to keep in mind when packing for the Cook Islands is having a tropical wardrobe that includes some more modest items of clothing for going out for dinner and or visiting a church, for example. A packing list for the Cook Islands might look a little something like this. Five singlets or t-shirts, one blouse or shirt to cover the shoulders for church or for dinners, two shorts slash skirts, one light evening dress to impress at dinner, one dress or skirt below the knee for church, one or two light sleepwear if you're against sleeping in your undies, one light jacket, cardigan or pashmina for cooler evenings. One sports shorts or leggings for hiking. One sports t-shirt or singlet for hiking. One outfit to travel between Rarotonga and home. Three bras including strapless, sports and comfort. Six underwear, four socks. One bikini for the beach or pool. One one-piece swimsuit for water sports, two board shorts for the guys, one rash vest, sun hat, sunglasses, light shirts to cover arms and back, light rain jackets, flip-flops slash sandals, walking shoes and reef shoes. And that's just the clothes. You can check out a full packing list on cookislandspocketguide.com. Now let's talk about some essential health products. With high UV levels and the presence of mosquitoes, certain health products are essential to take to the Cook Islands. The Cook Islands also has a fragile marine ecosystem, so natural sunscreens and repellents are a must. If going to the outer islands, a reusable water purification bottle is preferable to buying bottled water for obvious environmental reasons. When it comes to currency, the currency in the Cook Islands is New Zealand dollars. Most vendors accept Visa and MasterCard, while there are ATMs and options for currency exchange on Rarotonga and Aitutaki. Cash is the only way to go for the other outer islands. Note that the Cook Islands issues its own coins and banknotes that you won't be able to exchange overseas, so make sure you use them all up unless you want them just as a souvenir. As for travel documents and paperwork, visitors to the Cook Islands do not need a visa, but they do need a passport that is valid for no less than six months after your intended date of departure. That's seven days for New Zealand and Australian citizens. There may be other current entry requirements like vaccination certificates, so make sure to keep updated on our guides at cookislandspocketguides.com. Now, how long should you spend in the Cook Islands? The Cook Islands might make for an idyllic boutique resort getaway to simply relax for a few days, and that's fine. We all need some R&R &R from time to time. 
More intrepid travelers, however, will find that the Cook Islands is an excellent country not only for some minor island hopping, but mostly for road tripping around very small islands. We recommends the minimum number of days to spend in the Cook Islands is five days if just visiting Rarotonga. However, 10 to 14 days is the recommended number of days for a satisfying trip to the Cook Islands, especially if you want to include at least two islands, such as Rarotonga and Aitutaki. For those of you who want to explore, here's what you can achieve in certain time frames. And don't worry, we'll go on to all the destinations in the next few sections. For three days or a long weekend in the Cook Islands, you have enough time to see the highlights of Rarotonga. For five days, it gives you more time to comfortably explore one of the Cook Islands' most popular islands, either Rarotonga or Aitutaki, but not both. Some travelers will find that seven days is ideal for a mix of adventure and relaxation on Rarotonga, while more intrepid travelers might want to squeeze in a trip to Aitutaki. 10 days is a comfortable amount of time to enjoy two islands in the Cook Islands, such as Rarotonga and Aitutaki, or Rarotonga and either Atiu, Mangaya, Moke, or Mitiaro. For 14 days or two weeks in the Cook Islands, adventurous travelers can visit multiple atolls in the Cook Islands or simply enjoy Rarotonga and Aitutaki for longer. There's plenty to do. Just a quick note on how long you can stay in the Cook Islands. Visitors to the Cook Islands can stay up to a month. Visitor extensions are available. However, you can learn more about that as well as the different sample itineraries for all the timeframes just mentioned over at cookislandspocketguides.com. It's the easiest way to plan your trip to the Cook Islands. So which islands should you visit in the Cook Islands? The Cook Islands is made up of 15 islands split between two island groups, the Southern Group and the Northern Group. The most visited islands and the easiest to get to are the ones in the Southern Group, which is where Rarotonga and Aitutaki are located. The Northern Group is some 1,000 kilometers from Rarotonga, requiring a much pricier airfare or charter flight to get to. Nevertheless, those looking for a true South Seas adventure will be truly welcomed on these islands. Here's a quick rundown on the islands. In the Southern Group, we have Rarotonga, which is the Cook Islands top holiday hotspot. There's Aitutaki with beautiful lagoon with holiday accommodations, Atu is an eco-paradise with caves, birds and beaches. Mangaya is an ancient rocky island with caves. Moke is an uplifted atoll with beaches and banyan trees. Mitiaro is the best cave pools in the South Pacific. Palmerston is a lagoon with islets and a tiny population. Takutia is an uninhabited nature reserve as is Manuia. For the northern group, Penryn is the Cook Islands' largest lagoon with the best craftspeople. At Manahiki, black pearl producers and stunning lagoon is what it's all about. At Rakahanga, it has a remote atoll only accessible by boat. Puka Puka is home to a place with village life with sustainable practices. Nassau is only accessible by boat from Puka Puka. And finally, Suwaro is the Cook Islands' only national park. Again, make sure to look at cookislandspocketguides.com to see travel guides to all of those destinations. Okay, how do you get around the Cook Islands? The distance between islands and the Cook Islands is rather substantial, leaving very few options for island hopping. Once you have arrived on each of the islands, however, getting around is made extremely easy. Whether it's the good public transport system and vehicle rentals on Rarotonga, or hosts on the outer islands simply renting out their own car or scooter for you to explore at your leisure. 
First up, we have domestic flights and charter flights. There is one airline in the Cook Islands running scheduled and charter flights between nine of the Cook Islands. Renting a car is the most popular way for travellers to get around each of the islands, whether it's for ultimate freedom or because it's the only choice on some of the outer islands. A popular method for locals to get around, scooters are a more fuel-efficient way to travel around the islands of the Cooks. Note that visitors without a license to ride a motorcycle will need to go through a quick test at the Rarotonga police station to get their visitor's scooter license. For bicycles and e-bikes, while it's pretty tough going to ride around the whole of Rarotonga, as it's around 32 kilometers, bicycles and e-bikes are an affordable option for riding from A to B with plenty of time on your hands. Finally, the bus on Rarotonga. Rarotonga is the only island in the Cooks with a bus service. It is a cheap and frequent service with two buses revolving around the island in opposite directions at the same time. While those are the main ways to get around the Cook Islands, you can dive into all of your options, including some eco-friendly transport on cookislandspocketguides.com. Now, where should you stay in the Cook Islands? Here's a quick accommodation rundown. The Cook Islands has a broad and impressive range of holiday accommodations, from five-star resorts to humble holiday homes. Most accommodations are boutique, with only a few large resorts on Rarotonga, as well as for the mid-range to luxury markets. But there are a few budget op options if push comes to shove. Let's start with resorts. Resorts in the Cook Islands provide the complete holiday experience with various grades of rooms slash suites, usually containing an ensuite and basic hotel-like facilities such as a TV and drink-making facilities. Some resorts also have an in-room self-catering facilities. There are usually communal facilities such as a swimming pool, restaurant and water spot equipment rental if on the beach. As for villas, complexes of self-contained villas are very popular in the Cook Islands, usually consisting of bungalows with full self-catering facilities. They are very similar to resorts in that they usually have a swimming pool and water sports equipment for guests, but they tend to be much smaller complexes for a more intimate experience. Let's talk about holiday homes. From private holiday rentals with your own swimming pool to holiday home complexes, there are plenty of options to enjoy your own space in the Cook Islands. Holiday homes provide all you need for a home away from home experience right down to the washing machine. And finally for accommodation are guest houses. Head to the lesser visited outer islands and you're likely to stay in a guest house. These are similar to B&B's or backpacker accommodations, where guests sleep in private rooms but share communal facilities such as a bathroom and kitchen. What's more, almost all of the Cook Islands guest houses on the outer islands come with home-cooked meals. If you want to find out more about each of the accommodations we've just talked about, as well as see our top recommendations, be sure to check out cookislandspocketguide.com Now let's get to the fun stuff and talk about the best things to do in the Cook Islands. Contrary to popular belief, there's more to do in the Cook Islands than drink cocktails and sit by the pool. The Cook Islands exceeds in adventure, relaxation and culture, providing a generous mix of water and inland experiences. There's so much to do that we could hardly fit it all in our 101 best things to do in the Cook Islands. So make sure to check that out on the website. So let's start with some of the water activities to do in the Cook Islands. For snorkeling, you can snorkel in the lagoons or join sea scooter tours. For swimming with turtles, you can join snorkeling tours to prime turtle habitats. There are lagoon cruises, 
to visit uninhabited islets, snorkel and enjoy delicious local food. There's kayaking and sup, where you can join tours or hire water sports equipment to explore the lagoons. There's also scuba diving, where you can choose from tens of dive sites from drop-offs to caves. For kite surfing, there are flat lagoons and ideal trade winds for kite surfing. In terms of game fishing, the South Pacific's largest pelagics can be caught. For whale watching, take boat tours to watch or snorkel with whales between July and October. And the final water activity is surfing. Hit uncrowded reef breaks on Rarotonga. Now let's go for some land activities. For hiking, Rarotonga's interior is awash in jungle and mountain hikes. There's also culture tours. Learn how to make the Cook Island of food, take part in traditions and more. Don't miss any island nights, cultural shows with local food. Make be sure to check out the markets, delight in street food and browse local handicrafts. There's plenty of shopping and Rarotonga provides the opportunity to buy black pearls and all sorts of amazing crafts. As for natural attractions, explore caves, waterfalls, rock formations and more. There's also historical sites to see the remains of ancient Marai. There's also four-wheel drive tours, which are in the form of self-drive quad and buggy tours. You can also check out island tours where you can explore the island sites with a tour guide. Be sure to also check out the local museums and art galleries to be inspired and learn something new. And finally, check out the spa treatments. Visit a day spa or get a massage in your private villa. Again, we have all these activities listed on cookislandspocketguide.com. So this recommendations, whether you're traveling solo, on a budget, luxury, as a family, or as a couple. All right, let's talk about the food available in the Cook Islands. All kinds of cuisine are represented in the Cook Islands, especially on Rarotonga, which is best described as island cosmopolitan. What's more, self-catering is easy to manage with grocery stores found on most islands that people visit. Restaurants serve international dishes, including Asian, European and American, while local dishes are best tried at island nights or on certain food tours. There are a few cafes and restaurants on Aitutaki, while food is experienced on the outer islands through your host's home-cooked meals. Self-catering is made easy on Rarotonga and Aitutaki with plenty of accommodations, with cooking facilities, as well as supermarkets, convenience stores and roadside fruit stalls to pick up supplies. Vegetarian options are widely available across Rarotonga, but less so on the other islands. More specific dietary requirements like veganism and celiacs are tougher to cater to, so make sure you check out our guides for advice on Cook Island's Pocket Guide. By the way, if you're an adventurous foodie like me, then we have much more local recommendations listed on cookislandspocketguide.com. A quick word on food and water safety. Most tourist accommodations on Rarotonga and Aitutaki have access to safe drinking water, whether it's tap water through a UV filtration system or a jug of filtered water at reception. There are also filtered and treated public water stations where you can fill up your bottle. Finding clean drinking water on the outer islands is a little more challenging. Food in the Cook Islands is generally cooked to safe hygiene standards, for all things food in the Cook Islands, including markets to attend, foodie tours, restaurant recommendations and more, check out the website. Let's go over some typical costs and budget for a trip to the Cook Islands. 
We all travel very differently. Therefore, making a precise budget for everyone is an impossible task. Nevertheless, you can work out your own needs, thus budget, by simply looking at typical prices that I'm about to list, or you can check out these costs over at cookislandspocketguide.com. Note that I'm about to say the following prices in New Zealand dollars as it's the local currency and just so we go off a common currency for everyone. Starting with accommodation, a dorm bed per night is between 20 to 35 New Zealand dollars. For a private room in a guest house per night, that's between 60 to 200 New Zealand dollars. At a budget resort, an ensuite room per night is between 130 to 220. For a mid range resort ensuite room per night, that's between 230 to 550 New Zealand dollars. For a self contained family room per night, that's between 230 to 1100. For a luxury villa per night, that's between 700 to 2000 New Zealand dollars. And for a family holiday home per night, that's between 230 to 760 New Zealand dollars. Now let's treat ourselves with the average cost of food. A main breakfast meal is between 10 to 29 New Zealand dollars. A main lunch meal is between 15 to 35 New Zealand dollars. A main dinner meal is between 14 to 49 dollars. An island night buffet and show is between 60 to 130. A small coffee is between five and six New Zealand dollars. A bottle of beer is between 650 and eight. A glass of wine is around 12 New Zealand dollars. A cocktail can be between 11 to 21 New Zealand dollars. A mocktail or smoothie is between seven to 16. And a soft drink is between five to six. For those who are planning to self-cater in the Cook Islands, we have a cost breakdown of all your grocery food prices on cookislandspocketguide.com. Now let's get busy with the prices of activities. For a guided hike, this is between 25 to 80 New Zealand dollars. For a spa treatment, a one hour massage is between 80 to 150 New Zealand dollars. For a buggy or quad bike tour, that's between 125 to 150 New Zealand dollars. For a guided island tour, that's between 60 and 70. Museum entries are between 5 and 15. The outer islands cave tours are between 30 to 70 New Zealand dollars. For snorkel hire per day, that's either free or up to 10 New Zealand dollars. For sup or kayak hire for an hour, that's between 15 to 20. A lagoon cruise is between 79 to 160 New Zealand dollars. A swimming with the turtles tour is between 80 to 160. A snorkeling tour can be between 60 to 160. A fishing charter, private, is between 600 to 1,600. And for an intro dive, for scuba diving, that's between 200 and 220 New Zealand dollars. Okay, let's talk about the cost of transportation in the Cook Islands. For bicycle rental per day, that's between 10 to 25 New Zealand dollars. For a visitor scooter license, that's around 40 New Zealand dollars. For scooter rental per day, that's between 24 to 30. Car rental per day is between 40 to 80. The Rarotonga bus, a one-way trip, is around five New Zealand dollars. For a taxi per kilometer, that's around three New Zealand dollars or higher. For airport transfers per person, it's either free or 36 New Zealand dollars. An Aitutaki water taxi is between 35 to 80. A flight from Rarotonga to one of the islands in the southern group would be 250 to 275. A flight from Rarotonga to one of the islands in the northern group would be around 1,600 New Zealand dollars. 
For charter flights to the southern groups, that would be between $4,500 and $5,000 New Zealand dollars. And for a charter flight to the northern group, that would be around $11,000 New Zealand dollars. Now, if you want to calculate your spending money for the Cook Islands, here are a few averages for a daily budget for Rarotonga and the Cook Islands. These include food activities, transport and miscellaneous expenses. Each price is per person per day. If you're traveling on a budget, you may want to plan for 130 New Zealand dollars per person per day. If you're traveling mid-range, your daily budget would be around 250 New Zealand dollars. And for your luxury daily budget, plan for at least 460 New Zealand dollars. We have a full breakdown for budgets on cookislandspocketguide.com. Okay, thank you for joining me and putting up with the lively waves in the background. And as mentioned, we have guides to everything that we've gone through in detail and for free on cookislandspocketguide.com. So be sure to check that out. And the whole team is joining me in wishing you an amazing time in the Cook Islands. This ton of hermit's crab moving behind you is kind of entertaining. He's a really large one, like making his way all the way across. Oh yeah? Yeah. <laughs>